Hey y'all, it's Crafty Hope here and welcome to the You Me Same Three for May of 2021. This is a challenge from Michelle of Mickleney and Tiffany of Southern Gals Designs and they use the same three items, these three. Um, it changes every month and you're able to purchase the three items if you want to participate. So, as you saw, I had a piece of, this is some sticky back fabric, there was a piece of scrapbook paper and a tag. Now, the sticky back fabric and the scrapbook paper were far too bright for my liking. For, uh, they were just too bright for me. I needed to tone them down. So I've got the fabric here and I'm using, I use some alcohol ink spray, some homemade stuff, and then a couple different distress sprays. And that helped grunge it up. For the scrapbook paper there, I put it in some weak coffee and added some instant coffee on top and let it sit for a while about half an hour 45 minutes and then while it was wet sprinkled more instant coffee over the top of it so here's these two dry i'm adding a little more distress oxide spray and drying it and then i am going over the top of both of them with some gesso and then with some Americana acrylic paint in Oyster Beige. Now I've sped these up way, way, way a lot because I spent way too much time altering these. Um, this video is already so, so long. I didn't want you to have to sit through, I don't know, 45 minutes of me showing you how I altered these two items. So, because unfortunately I don't really, you'll see what I do with them. Um, I added some stamps too. This one is, um, what is it? It's just a text stamp with some black stays on. And then I've got a Tim Holtz uh, texture stamp that looks kind of like a grid there that I'm using some more stays on, but that is in ganache, I believe is the color. So it's like a light brown. None of that really matters. You'll never see any of this. <laughs> it just helped me break up the brightness of those two things and kind of make it more workable for me. So I decided to work in this square dilutions journal that I haven't touched since the You Me Same 3 challenge for January, I think. So yeah, I needed to jump back in this one. Um, I've been working in some fairly small journals lately, so I, this was a challenge to work in a big journal. I, I don't know it just was. So I decided to start by breaking up the page and using a pencil to just do a big old scribble across the page. Um, you can see, I thought about that for a minute and then I was like, all right, let's collage because that's a great way for me to break up stuff. So I had a couple different things I had pulled out. Most of them were papers that had inks and paints and rust dye and coffee dyes on them. I'm not going to make you watch me sit there and glue all of this down. Um, we'll skip ahead. So I'm going I'm just using my Uhu glue stick to get these down. And then I'm going to come in and use my Uhu glue stick. I'm trying to see. Yeah. So I get all of those down and then I've got that altered scrapbook paper and I'm just tearing it up. Um, and I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to let y'all see me actually add it into the journal here since it is one of the elements that are necessary for this challenge. Um, I do like that I've got a pop of color in there. I tried to make all the other elements that I've got going on there kind of neutral. I think uh, the dictionary paper I've got in there has got a little tiny bit of pink on it, but everything else um, was just neutral. So, and y'all look at the back of that scrapbook paper where I altered it. I almost like that more than I like the front. <laughs> and I, I really considered just using that, but, um, yeah, I decided to, to push myself and use these ingredients. Um, again, I, I really, really struggled with this and I don't know why. So if you saw the picture at the beginning, it, um, this page doesn't really come together completely, but I kind of like it because I'm trying some things in it that I haven't tried before. So, and that's kind of becomes the theme of this. 
All right, here's that sticky back fabric. I don't know where Michelle got this. <laughs> um, it's interesting, but all I'm going to do is I decided to snip it just a little and tear it, and I'm gonna snip it into about three different pieces. Um, I do like this first one I put down. I actually had a bit of string hanging off of it, so that gives a lot of fun texture to it. And then these other two strips, um, because I'm tearing it, they do have a little bit of a frayed edge to them. So that's really nice. And then something possessed me, and I decided I really needed some big black blobs on this page. Um, I think I thought I was going to do some mark making in white on top of them. But to start with, I just had to get them down. Um, I don't end up doing the mark making with white on them. But um, again, I'm still kind of breaking up this page and just getting some things down and playing with my ideas. And um, over on this right side, I was having trouble getting the paint to stick because that's where I had used my Uhu glue stick. And so it was kind of acting as a resist on the page a little. So, yeah, I, um, yeah, I'm just putting these big black blobs down. I don't, like I said, I, I really thought that I was going to keep them, but I struggled getting everything to become cohesive with this page. Um, I end up making it work. Um, I think anyway, at least the background becomes a little cohesive. Now here I, I just kind of scribbled on what was left of the paint on my paintbrush. And in the end, y'all, this really, that bottom left corner, I love the texture that I end up getting down there. I will try to make sure that I have that in a picture at the end of this video. But yeah, I really kind of love it. Now I decided to go ahead and just scrape the whole page. You can see how the, where I scrape on the right, some of that paint picked up because that's where some of the Uhu had been down. So I don't know, I may try in the future to, to make a resist. So I pull out this Lucas acrylic paint in uh, turquoise. And I could see some of the turquoise paint poking up from the scrapbook paper and blue is my favorite color. So I thought, hey, I'll go ahead and just put this turquoise down because I could see it out of the corner of my eye on my paint cart. And so I was like, yeah, that'll work because that's, that's um, what I can see in that scrapbook paper. And so I'm just making some circles on here. I... I while I was doing this, I kind of was mad at myself because I hadn't intended to put any pops of color. That's why I altered the fabric and the scrapbook paper was because I didn't really want any bright color. So as I was putting this down, I was like, what am I doing? I didn't, I didn't really feel like working with bright color today. So yeah, so I'm going to try this and try to figure out what I'm going to do from there. And the page just wasn't feeling like the background was complete to me. It didn't, um, yeah, it wasn't flowing. So I decided to add some more collage. So I'm going to stick down this washi with the Japanese words on it. And then I'll also stick down, I've got some deli paper that was rust dyed. And I'll speed ahead of that because, again, y'all don't need to see me collage things down. Um, so I've got this washi down and then I'm coming in with that rust dye deli paper. So I put that down in a couple spots and then decided to bring that altered scrapbook paper back in again because I felt like it had gotten pushed to the background too much. I could still see some of the fabric in there, at least a little bit of it. I'm not seeing all of it. <laughs> I guess I covered some of it up. Oh yeah, I painted over some of it, didn't I? And then I looked at that y'all and it was just a hot mess and I felt like it needed to become cohesive. So I grabbed my gesso. That is the Prima Marketing Finabare Heavy Body. I, hold on. It's right here so I can look at it. It's the heavy gesso in white. And so I just kind of like you saw it, squeezed it out onto the page and grabbed a brayer and I'm going to brayer that over the page thinking that'll bring this page together. Um, spoiler, it doesn't, it doesn't, not yet, not yet anyway. Um, but I had a good time brayering this all out. And do you see that bottom left corner, how it's gotten transformed that black with that little bit of gesso over it? Ah! 
um, it's going to get better. But um, yeah, we got to wait a minute. So I'm still looking at it, trying to figure out how to bring it together. So I grab my Distress Oxides in, I think it's Vintage Photo and Walnut Stain. So I spray, I think that's Vintage Photo, and then this one is Walnut Stain? I'm pretty sure. Let me look. Again, those are still on my desk because I just finished doing this and was like, look, I'm going to go ahead and record this while I'm thinking about it because it's fresh on my brain. So... All right, so here I dried it, and I sat and looked at this, y'all, forever and ever and ever and ever, <laughs> trying to think what I could do to, to bring it all together, and I finally decided what was bothering me was seeing all of those seams in the paper and the breaks where you could see the, um, the original paper from the journal behind it. So I, I broke that gesso back out and just got a big brush and kind of messily just went over the areas where I used my viewfinder and my camera to kind of look at it and see what areas were really bothering me the most. And I covered them up with gesso and not like completely, but I just kind of blended that gesso, kind of put the gesso right where it was. And you can see I'm just kind of blending it, making these splotchy whiteness and y'all it works this gives this page kind of more a floaty ethereal dreamy feeling to it it's some of that distress oxide blended as well because of course it's water reactive it's a distress product um and so it reacted a little bit with the with the gesso and yeah it's even that my big blue splotch, my big blue circles, they're not splotches, my big blue circles that I put down ended up getting dreamy too. And the black acrylic paint that I put down just kind of disappeared and gave it some depth. And y'all, I'm going to have to do this more. So this was something um, I think I used to do a little bit more often and haven't really done in a while. Um, You know, kind of putting gesso on the seams to to integrate it into each other and it's yeah look at that that is a huge difference I might have to like do a before and after photo <laughs> of how this looked because to me it it's way less it's it's more seamless it it flows it feels like a background it's not it's not as crazy as it was and I still can see pops of my, I, I kind of lost the fabric in there and that's unfortunate, but it did add quite a bit of texture to the page. Um, you can still see the scrapbook paper with some of that pink popping out. Um, because now somehow it's the pink that I'm seeing more of. And so that I'm going to, for my next step, that's what we're going to roll with there. And, um, I'll go ahead and say, I, I thought and thought, about what I wanted to do and I knew I wanted to add some pink on there some magenta to kind of bring out the pink that's in that scrapbook paper and I knew I didn't have the right color in acrylic paint and that would be too opaque and I couldn't think of any of my inks that I had that would work and and I just went back and forth and finally remembered this Jane Davenport set of watercolors I have in what is it? I think it's the brights is the set and I love this set. I um, don't use it near enough because it's too precious, um, which is my, um, yeah, that's my MO. If something, if I like something a lot, I never use it because yeah, I might use it up, which is the stupidest thing in the world. Y'all, I know, I know, don't, don't get on to me. I know, but it's what I do. So I took that brights and the one color that's on there, I think, think it was called fairy tale or something like that and it was the magenta that I felt like matched this the best and you see I just made little dashes I used a little watercolor brush and I'm just adding some marks and this texture and it really transformed this page that little bit of gesso and then some watercolor and magenta and loving it so I'm gonna dry this real quick and y'all I haven't touched that tag yet did you notice um so I've brought it out here going, oh gracious, I've got to do something with this. Um, first, I brought in a few more scribbles with my pencil. And I'm kind of um, blending them just a little bit. 
And I wanted, I think I knew I wanted to have the tag sticking up above the page. So I kept putting it up there. And then I was like, look, let's really alter this. Let's, let's, I've already altered the other two items. Let's go ahead and alter this tag. So I tore it. Um, not something I normally do. I just tore that baby. I think I meant to tear it a little bit higher, but I was letting myself, um, just go for it. And, um, it kind of got a little closer to half, but that's okay. I'm working with it. Um, I decided since I already had the watercolors out and I had put the watercolor on the page that I wanted to watercolor on that tag. So I'm going to start by putting just a little bit of gesso down so it'll give it some texture, give it, you know, places where it soaks into the car or the tag and places where it, um, sits on the gesso. So just put a little bit of gesso on there and I wet my watercolors and y'all I've sped this up because I am no watercolor expert I'm still working with my watercolor skill skills and I just wanted to make some flowers so I'm trying to use some of the colors that I remember were on that scrapbook paper which was the magenta and green and blue were the colors I remember being on there so that's what I'm going with to just do some flowers, um, or some semblance of flowers. <laughs> um, I love just doing spirals so that it looks kind of like a rose. And then I'm going to just do some leaves and stems. And, um, I didn't wait long enough in a couple places for the watercolor to dry. So it was bleeding. And I kind of love that. But it wasn't what I was going for, but I let it happen because that's what watercolor does. Watercolor kind of goes where it wants to go. So as you see here, I'm trying to add some more green on here because that was my original thing. I wanted to see some, some green leaves and stuff. Um, but I knew I needed that magenta as well since I had made those those magenta marks all over my page. So here I'm about finishing up, um, I think, yeah, this is the last thing. I had a little bit of darker blue inside my, I don't even know what kind of flowers those are supposed to be. Um, oh no, I did add some more leaves on there, didn't I? And then I'm going to dry this. And then I struggle with where I want to put it. And um, when I put it down on my page there, I realized it was the edges or it, it, it was too much of a contrast being all clean and everything else on there. I've gotten, gotten the grungy treatment. So I grabbed a, um, blending tool and a distress oxide in walnut stain, and I'm just darkening the edges just to give it a little more grungy, like everything else on that page has. And I decided to separate since I had torn that tag, I decided to separate them. Um, this was something I sat and looked at for a while. I turned the camera off and thought about it. And decided I was just going to hand write something into the space over there on the right. And what I decided to put is if you never try your... Ugh, I can't speak now. What I wrote was, if you never try, you'll never know. And um, you know, I think that's from a Disney song, isn't it? If It feels like it's from like Pocahontas or something. In any case, um, I was looking for inspirational words online. I found that... And it kind of spoke to me because I was trying some different things on here and, you know, adding the watercolors and blending things and, and it's going to prompt the one last thing I do after I write this. So I started to kind of practice this out on my page and I decided, you know what, I'm just going for it. This has taken long enough. I'll make it work. <laughs> So I took my black Sharpie poster marker, paint pen, whatever you want to call it. It's the water-based one and went ahead and wrote out my phrase. Um, I thought I've got to get, I think, my Posca out and do this sometime because those Sharpies, I've got a broader tip and I can't do some of the like brush stroke stuff with it that I would have liked to have done, but that's okay. I mean, this works fine, but I need to, um, you know, use some other paint pens every now and then. <laughs> All right, so I got that wrote, written, I wrote it, I wrote it. And then I'm going to use my Liquitex Matte Medium 
and just glue down those tags but since they are a little heavy and there's so much texture on the page I thought that would be the best adhesive so I'm using anything on my desk I can to hold it down <laughs> and just getting it down and then I'm trying to think what I'm gonna do next while it is drying I think what I decide to do um, I sat there and looked at that, and um, at the time, the words weren't really popping to me. Um, I'm seeing now, looking at this, that the words pop just fine. Um, but what I decided to do was to take a, what is it, a Uniball Signo White gel pen and trace the words just to give them some highlights and help them pop a little bit more. So I'm going to grab that and you'll see um oh no what else I did I, since I didn't really have black anywhere else on the page at least not that start stark matte black I'm adding just some some little dots um more mark making and just to give it you know make that color work in there so here's where I'm going to trace the letters I'm going to skip ahead y'all do not need to see me painstakingly trace it look Ta-da! Magic done. So here's one thing that I decided to do that I've never done because if I've never tried, I'll never know. Um, what I decided to do was to add a little scrap of fabric up in the the hole of the tag up there so that it will come poking out of my page. And I got also got a what is it? A mother of pearl button, y'all. I love buttons. Some reason I never put them in my art journaling, and I want to fix that. So this is my my attempt here. Here we go. <laughs> um, I also got some embroidery floss in a color that kind of matches that like magenta I had going on, and so I'm going to you know put that on a needle. And y'all, in a second here, I'm going to poke myself with that needle. I I definitely bled. Um, <laughs> But, um, yeah, I've got my needle threaded and knotted, and I thought I was going to somehow, I don't know. So here I am. I'm going to try to sew this on here. And there, that's, <laughs> I poked myself right there with that needle. So when I get the shank button through the hole back there, um, I realize I can't get the needle through. So I'm not going to be able to sew the fabric on the way I first thought I was going to. And so I'm like, all right, plan B, we're going to try something else. So I just thread the fabric through the hole of the tag. And then put the, the y'all, and I was rushing because I knew how long this video was getting. So I apologize for the length of this. Um, but like I said, I tried some new things and used my three items from Michelle and Tiffany and I got a page that I kind of like, so I'm going to let y'all watch me sew this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I keep saying the crazy things over and over again. I'd like for y'all to make sure you have hopped over to Michelle and Tiffany's pages, pages, videos. Ha! Ah! Go watch their videos. Um, I'll also put down links to anybody else that participated in this You Me Same 3 for May. So I encourage you to go look at them and see how they use these three items. I am totally um, wanting to see what everybody else did because, yeah, I um, I struggled. Y'all saw that. I struggled a lot. All right, so I sewed that button on there, kind of overlapping the fabric up there, and I'm trying to tighten it a little bit. It was a little floppy, so I kind of just went around it. That was part of the reason I used a fabric that a fabric a thread that matched all right and I'm finishing this up and that's gonna be it for this page y'all thank you for your patience for this very long video and my chaos um, if you like this make sure to give me a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed please do subscribe I have other videos that aren't so long or so um, I don't know lost but let me know what you've tried new recently and um, keep on crafting on Thanks for watching, y'all. Bye.